Hey you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am super excited about today's video because it's something I've been wanting to film for a while and I think will be really helpful to all of you. I'm going to be giving 20 health hacks. These are things that I've just slowly implemented into my life that I do every day that I don't really think about, but when I tell people about, they, they're like, oh, that's super awesome, that's really good to know. I originally saw this video on Sarah's Day YouTube channel and I thought it was super good and super informative, so I wanted to share my health hacks with you. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. It helps us so much when you guys subscribe and like our videos. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below. I have tons more health hacks that I didn't include in this, and I would love to share if it's something you're interested in. So let's get right into it. So my first tip is to drink your greens. I know if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I am obsessed with green smoothies. I drink them every single day, and for a long time I hated the taste of green drinks, celery juice, all of that. But once I found a green smoothie recipe that was super delicious and filling, I was totally hooked. I have the recipe on my blog, I'll link it in the description below, but basically it's cucumber, kale, spinach, banana, mango, avocado, ice, and a little bit of nut milk. It is my favorite drink. I drink it every morning, and when I don't have it, I crave it. The reason I say to drink your greens is it's pretty hard to consistently be eating veggies throughout the day, especially if you're super busy. But when I have a green smoothie in the morning, I know that no matter what happens that day, I started off my day on the right foot, and I drink my greens. My baby Knox also loves the green drinks, and he craves them, so we just make a bunch, feed it to him throughout the day, and leave it in the fridge. My second tip is to make homemade salad dressing. I, for a long time, did not eat salads at home because I hated the taste of the store-bought dressing. Or when I would buy them, I liked the taste, but they were full of a ton of additives and sugar and just gross stuff. But once I started making it on my own, I was able to eat salads super easily because I had a delicious dressing that I loved. I'll link a recipe for a salad dressing I make all the time, but I like um, balsamic vinaigrette, I like a lemon dressing, and I also like doing pesto and balsamic oil. These dressings help me eat a lot more salads throughout the day, and I can make sure that all of the ingredients in the dressing are good to go. My third tip is to buy a good reusable water bottle. I use this Hydro Flask, and I've used it for like five years now. I love them because it keeps my water cool. Once I started carrying around a reusable water bottle with me, I drank so much more water and I was choosing water over other drinks. Also, it's really awesome if you have a reusable water bottle because you save a lot of plastic. Four, drink lemon water. Every day I fill up my Hydro Flask and I add the juice of half a lemon to the water. I personally just really love the taste, but lemon water has tons of good health benefits and it's just an easy, simple thing you can do. Five, use natural skincare products and deodorant. I found that it was pretty easy to switch over into a more natural lifestyle for a lot of things, but it took me a few years to convert to natural skincare and deodorant just because I didn't really see the importance of it. I learned that your skin is actually the largest organ on your body, and so if you're putting products on your body that aren't good, it can have like pretty bad effects for your body. There's been a lot of studies that have linked using regular deodorant to having some bad effects because of the aluminum in the deodorant. I actually made the switch when I started nursing Knox because he was so close to my armpit that I didn't want to like have that crappy deodorant on my armpit and have him beat on there. I don't know. But when I first made the switch, I couldn't find one that I loved. I was always like going back and forth between different deodorants. I found one that I liked and I used it for a while, but then they changed their formula and it didn't work anymore. Um, but for the last couple months, I've been using Kopari deodorant. I actually will do a link and a discount code to the deodorant if you're interested. It's a coconut oil based deodorant and they have really good flavors and scents. So far, it's proved to be really good for me. One thing that you need to know about natural deodorant is there is a detoxifying period where it's not really gonna be that effective, but you have to stick with it. Also, it doesn't keep you from sweating, it keeps you from smelling. So don't be surprised if you're still kind of sweating down there. That's how it usually works, but it does keep you from smelling when you sweat. Skincare products that I love, I personally use BioClarity every day. I've used them for a long time. I use their whole routine. I like their um, cleansers and their masks. I also like Kopari, like I said. I like their skincare products also. I like Hello Body. I like Folane and... There's a few others, but those are the ones that come to mind. Those are my favorites. Six is take high quality supplements. If you're gonna be taking supplements, make sure that the ingredients in them are up to your standard and they're clean and high quality because a lot of companies will advertise it as having clean supplements, but when you really get down into the details, it, they aren't so good. I make sure I take a good prenatal vitamin just because that's important to me. 
And so I use pre-mama's prenatal vitamin and I just make sure that whatever I'm putting in my body has clean and transparent ingredients. Seven, to go along with the supplements, use high quality protein powders. Once again, protein powders can be a really good addition to your diet if you're using the right ones. If you're using gunk protein powders, it's not doing anything for you, it's actually hurting you. So if you're going to use protein powders, do your research, find a clean one that you love. I personally like Tropeca's, I use Vital Protein's Collagen, I also like Collagen for Her, and I've heard good things about Orgain, I'm going to try that one too, that's a clean protein powder. You can use these when you bake or in smoothies or even just to drink a protein drink, but they have really good health benefits as long as you're choosing the right one. Tip 9, get outside for at least 30 minutes a day. I know that might not sound hard, but there are some days when I get so busy working and grinding that I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been too long since I went outside. I've learned that taking time to step away from work, step away from the computer or whatever you're doing, the laundry, the dishes, is so good for your mental health. It lets you breathe fresh air, just kind of recalibrate and just enjoy your day more. When I take breaks throughout the day, my day is significantly better than when I spend the whole day inside. Nine is listen to a podcast while you walk or run. I personally do not like running. I've gotten better at running and I like it a little more. But one thing that really helped me enjoy it more was listening to podcasts. When I would listen to music, I just was kind of repetitive and I'd give up easy or I'd go too fast and outpace myself. But when I started listening to podcasts, I was able to keep a more stable pace, run for longer, and enjoy it more. I also listen to podcasts when I take knocks on long walks or when I'm cleaning around the house. It's a good way to focus on your mental health and your education while getting other things done. It's super hard for me to make time to read a book. Like, between working and having a baby and being a wife and all of that stuff, the thought of sitting down and reading a book just... It just doesn't happen. But audiobooks and podcasts are a great way to educate yourself and make time for yourself throughout the day. Ten, find an exercise that you love. I dreaded working out for so many years because I hated it. And I hated running. And I would only do the things I hated because I thought that's what you're supposed to do. You're exercising. It's supposed to suck. But once I started finding workouts that made me happy, it was a total game changer. I looked forward to waking up every morning and getting my workout in. That could even be, maybe you like to dance or swim. You can do whatever it is as long as you love what you're doing. I use the Sweat App BBG Power at Home program and I wouldn't say that I love doing it, but once I'm done, I feel so energized, my day's better, and it's a workout that I'm able to crank out in 28 minutes and feel super strong and healthy after I do it. 11, to kind of go along with that, is find a workout buddy or find a workout guide that's easy to follow. Like I said, I use the Power at Home program and it's super easy to follow, it's right on my app. There's guides you can buy, my friend Brittany Kent, she has a workout guide, it's super awesome, you can use that. I know people like my friend Mom Strong, she has a really good program too. Just find a program that aligns with you and that you can feel that you will be able to be consistent to and you'll enjoy doing. Also, it helps to find a workout buddy. You don't necessarily have to follow a specific program, but if you have a buddy to keep you accountable and motivated, it makes it a lot more fun and it's easier to stick with it. 12. Don't buy junk food. This doesn't mean that you can't eat junk food, but just don't buy it. Don't keep it in your house. If you're struggling with a sugar addiction, don't keep candy in your house. Or if you really want to cut back on maybe wheat or flour or carbs, just don't buy carbs at home. It sounds simple, but once I started cutting down on buying the things that I was trying to eliminate from my diet, it was so much easier just to not eat them. For example, I've been trying to eat less dairy. I really love dairy, um, and I don't even really react to it that badly. I just noticed that it does make me feel a little bloated, and it does kind of make me hold on to weight a little more. So I try to keep my dairy intake to a minimum. I still eat it, but when I go out to eat, I'll eat dairy. When I go to a friend's house, or I'll even keep a little bit of dairy at home. But when I'm buying like sour cream, cream cheese, a ton of different cheeses, it's and like milk, then I'm way more inclined to be snacking on it throughout the day. So just don't buy the foods that you're tempted to eat and just don't keep it at home. 13. Use good quality oils. Oils do not have to be this bad thing that you're trying to avoid all the time. Oils can have actually lots of health benefits and they can be a really good tool for making your cooking taste better, but just avoid the highly processed oil. The oils that we use in our house are avocado oil, coconut oil, and olive oil. Do your research before using an oil as well because avocado oil is my favorite because it's full of healthy fats, but also it has the highest smoke point. This means when you're cooking with avocado oil, it can reach a high smoke point where the oil won't burn and lose all of its nutritional value. 
coconut oil and olive oil, for example, are high quality oils, but they have low smoke points. So if you're going to be grilling with them or baking at a high heat, the oil will burn and it will lose all of its nutritional value. I like to use coconut oil for skincare, baking, um, when I cook with a really low heat, same with olive oil. If I'm making a salad dressing, it's great because it's not even cooked. Or if I'm cooking on a low heat, that's fine. If I'm grilling or baking on a high heat, I always go with avocado oil. And it's super flavorless, so I use it with pretty much everything and you don't taste it. To go along with that, 14 is eat healthy fats. When you hear the word fat, you think, oh, if I eat fats, I'm going to get fat. That's not true. You have to think, what exactly is this fat you're talking about? And avocado has tons of fat in it. But it's good, healthy fats. It has omega-3s and it has tons of nutrients that are good for your body. Same with coconut. If you have coconut oil or even coconut meat, it has tons of fat. Coconut milk. If you look at the can on coconut milk, it says it has like 600 calories. But the kind of fat is good for you. So don't be scared of fats. Just make sure you're eating the right fat. 15 is buy high quality and organic groceries if you can. I know that this doesn't make financial sense for a lot of people. But be selective about what kind of products you're putting in your house. For example, chicken, I eat chicken, I think chicken is great, but if you're buying the highly processed pump full of antibiotics and hormones versus an organic cage-free chicken, they're not even the same animal basically. Make sure that you're buying high quality products and even if you maybe buy a snack that says healthy, gluten-free, non-GMO, read the ingredients because they can still sneak tons of additives and crap in there that you just want to avoid. I don't buy all of my produce organic. I do try to follow the Dirty Dozen rule. There are fruits and vegetables that are more important to buy organic. For example, if I'm eating a banana, it doesn't matter as much if an orange or a banana is organic because they have that protective natural casing and peel on them. So if they spray it down with things, the actual fruit is less likely to get affected. But if you're eating spinach where they're just spraying it directly on the leaf, that is more important to buy organic. So if you are kind of transitioning or if you're on a budget, do your research about the things that are most important to buy organic and then go from there. Number 16 is buy cute workout clothes. If you want to be motivated to work out, buy clothes that you feel confident and cute when you're wearing. Whenever I buy a new workout set, I'm way more inclined to want to work out if I feel good while doing it. Just buy clothes that flatter you and make you feel confident. My favorite leggings are from Aerie and they're like $20. I have five pairs of them, wear them all the time and they're so comfy. I'll link those in the description as well, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Just find something that holds up during a workout and it's really comfortable to wear. 17. Don't drink your calories. If you are trying to be more conscious about what you're eating, I really recommend that you stick to basically just water and smoothies. If you're drinking a lot of like frappuccinos or if you're drinking lots of sugary juices or soda, it is gonna come back to you. And the easiest way to eliminate some of those things is just by not buying them and just drinking water instead. I personally only pretty much drink water and smoothies and I've noticed that that has helped me so much and it's something that even when I feel like I haven't been eating right lately, I can always count on that I am drinking things that are good for my body. 18. Learn to cook vegetables well. Vegetables are delicious. I did not used to think that though. Even like five years ago, I was like, eh, vegetables are whatever. I'll eat them. Now, I crave vegetables. When I open my fridge and it's full of vegetables, I'm like, yes! If you learn to cook them right and to season them right, it will change everything for you. You can also integrate vegetables in really sneaky ways into your diet where your family members won't notice or maybe your picky boyfriend or your kids. You can sneak those vegetables into there and they'll just drink it or eat it without even realizing. But if you learn how to make them taste good, it's a total game changer for your health. 19 is to keep a journal. I actually kept a journal for like 15 years, I think. I wrote in it every single day and I'd write page after page. And it's really fun to look back on and I wish I was still that good at journaling, but lately I have been trying to journal a little bit more so I can look back on this time and remember the positive moments as a family. It's also really good for my mental health, it clears my head and it makes me count my blessings. Since I don't have a ton of time anymore, I have been using this five year journal. They just ask you one question and you answer a question every single day for five years so then you can read your responses back over the years. I'll link that in the description as well. 20. Make time to call your family and friends. This is also huge for your mental health. It's so important that you either connect with them in real life or over the phone because making those connections is so good for a million aspects of your health. My camera died so I'm switching over to my phone. Use frozen fruit and smoothies. 
I always get asked how I'm able to afford all this fresh fruit or where I'm getting this fresh fruit from. But in reality, I just buy frozen fruit from Costco and it lasts me forever. I just stock up on it. I found that this is a super good way to make sure that your fruit is always ripe and delicious. 22 is to set a budget and stick to it. If you ever want to get to where you want to be in life and you want to reach those goals, you have to set a budget. I know it doesn't seem fun and it seems like more work than it's going to be worth, but setting a budget has allowed us to have so much peace of mind and it's given us a greater sense of financial freedom in the long run. When we save and we have a clear end goal, it really motivates us to keep on working and keep on saving our money so we can get to where we want to be. 23 is to set realistic and attainable goals. If you set a goal to lose 50 pounds in a month, you're going to end up disappointed in the end. Um, but if you maybe set a goal to feel healthier or get more sleep or feel stronger this month, it's a lot more achievable and it will motivate you to keep going. I like to set goals that I feel like I can achieve and they might be challenging that month, but it's something that's doable. It's not a good feeling when you set goals and you don't achieve them. So set goals that will challenge you, but are also in the realm of possibility. My 24th tip is to exercise early in the morning. It is so much easier for me to exercise if I just wake up, wash my face, brush my teeth and work out. If I let things pile up and I push it back, push it back, push it back, it's not gonna happen. And honestly, this last year, I have gotten out of the routine. I work out every day, but it's like not nearly as much as I want to be or as consistent as I want to be as I was before I was a mom. But I did learn that if I just get my workout clothes on when I wake up and I get it done, it makes me feel so much better throughout the day and I'm able to just check it off and get on with my day. And my last tip is don't let comparison bring you down. Let it show you what's possible. I know it's so hard to not compare yourself to people who you feel like are stronger than you, skinnier than you, healthier than you. Get those thoughts out of your mind. Let it motivate you. Let it show you what's possible. And apply this with every area of your life, not just with looks or your physical health. If you see someone chasing after their dreams and accomplishing something that you want to accomplish, don't let it bring you down and make you feel less than. Let it show you what is possible for you in the future. This shift in mentality will create overall so much better mental health and it will just really help you in your life. So these are all my health hacks for today. I have so much more. If you want to hear more of my health hacks or see more of them, comment below and I can make more videos expounding on this. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps our channel so much. And subscribe if you want to see more videos from us. We will be posting next week. But in the meantime, have a great week and thank you for watching. <laughs>